Hi dear Hot Hot friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're all okay. Are you set for another story? I hope so, because I'm going to tell you a great story about loyalty. Now, are you a loyal person yourself? Do you have any loyal friends? Why do we do that? Well, follow me to the beautiful land of Persia and we, I will tell you a great story about it. Stay with us. Once upon a time, in a town in Persia, lived Ali Baba with his family. He was a woodcutter, but he wasn't a really rich one. So he had to work all day and night at the forest, so he could make a living for his family. He was always dreaming about having a shop in the town so he could sell goods to people. One day, he was working in the forest and suddenly he heard some noises. He looked carefully and he saw a troop of men on the horsebacks coming towards him. So he climbed the tree and hid there. He counted the men. There were 40 of them. He thought to himself, whether they were the band of 40 thieves that all of Persia were afraid of. A strong and tall man dismounted his horse. He was the leader of the 40 thieves. He went to a big rock and said the words, Open Sesame! Open Sesame! And suddenly a door appeared on the rock. It was a hidden cave. Ali Baba was very curious. He waited for a while and then he saw the leader and his thieves coming out of the rock and the leader said, Shot Sesame! Shot Sesame! And suddenly the door disappeared. After they went away, Ali Baba climbed down the tree and went to the rock. He wanted to see what was in there. So he said the magical words, Open Sesame! Open Sesame! Suddenly a door reappeared just like it did for the thieves. He went into the cave and he found himself in a big room full of shiny coins and diamonds. Now, what do you think that he did? Stay with me, I'll be back and I will tell you. Okay, my friends, if you remember, Ali Baba went into the hidden cave and he saw a lot of coins and diamonds in there. He thought that the thieves would be back so soon. So he gathered all he could under his cloak and he left quickly. When he was leaving in his haste, he remembered the magical words. He shouted, Shot Sesame! Shot Sesame! And the door was disappeared again. He didn't notice, but one of the coins fell out of his cloak and fell on the ground. He went away. After some time, the thieves and their leader came back. Luckily for Ali Baba, they didn't see the coin. Days after days, weeks after weeks, they didn't notice it. Until someday, the leader found a glimmering coin on the ground. He took it angrily and said, what is this? How did you risk exposure to our hidden place? The thieves were so afraid of him. They said, Master, we're sorry. We wouldn't do such thing. We know that the punishment to this thing would be so severe. The captain walked anxiously through his thieves. He was walking and walking and thinking. What would he do? Until he said, I know. We go into the town, we search for the newly rich man, and when we find him, we kill him and his family. 
Now let me tell you about Ali Baba. He opened his dream shop in the town, and he was respected by all because he was so fair and generous, and everybody liked him. He had hired a helper named Mary. She was so clever and so beautiful, and she cared deeply for Ali Baba and his family. One day, a stranger came to the shop. She had a lot of questions about Ali Baba and his family. This worried Mary. She vowed to have a watchful eye on the shop. Who was he? What do you think? I'm gonna tell you. He was a thief in disguise. Later, he came back to his captain, and he reported of what he saw. He told him that Ali Baba was a woodcutter, and he was so poor a while ago. Now he's very rich. The captain thought for a while and said. I know. I will give you a chalk. You follow him, and you will mark his door. I will go there in the midnight with twenty men. As he was told, he crept into the shadows and followed Ali Baba. He found the home and marked the door with the white chalk. Little he did, did he know that Mary was following him too. Mary had a white chalk, and she marked all of the doors. She was very clever, don't you think? She wanted the doors to seem identical so that they wouldn't know which house to attack. When the captain and his twenty thieves arrived, they saw that all of the doors looked the same. They didn't know what to do, so they crept back with shame. You see, my little kids, you see how Mary's cleverness saved the life of Ali Baba and his family. It's very important to be loyal at all of the times, but the captain didn't give up. He had a new plan. What do you think it was? Well, I'll be back and I will tell you. Just to stay with me. Welcome back. Here I am to tell you what the plan was. Now the captain was thinking and thinking, and then he said, "I want a brave man to apply my plan." A thief stepped out. The captain told him, "I have a red chalk. You go, you mark Ali Baba's house door, and I will come with thirty men this time." Well, do you think that this plan is working or not? Just like the last time, the thief crept into the shadows and went to his house. He marked the door with the red chalk, but Mary was more clever than that. She did the same trick again, and their plan didn't work. But the captain was more stubborn than that. This time, he planned to have all of his force against Ali Baba and his household. So, he told his thieves. That I'm gonna be disguised as an oil merchant, and you will hide in the barrels of oil. The thieves hid in the barrels and waited for their captain's signal. The captain, disguised as a merchant, went to Ali Baba's house and said, "I'm alone here at night, and I have cargo. Can you give me a place to stay?" Ali Baba was very generous, so he said, "Yes, yes." You can put your cargo in the back. There are hay there to put your meals, and then you can join us for the dinner. The merchant accepted it politely, but they didn't know anything about his plan. On the way in, he went to the barrels and said, "You wait here for my signal, and then you will storm Ali Baba's house." They had a lovely dinner, and Mary was there to help them as well. After the dinner was finished, Mary was cleaning up the room, and suddenly her lamp ran out of oil. She thought she could use some of the oil in the barrels, so she went there. When she was trying to open the barrel, she heard something. Is it time yet? She was very worried and scared as well. She said, "Not yet, but soon." Mary gathered some hay around the barrels. And torched them. 
the cowardly thieves jumped out of their barrels, coughing from the smoke. And they ran away so they wouldn't get hurt of the fire. The captain was left alone in there. What do you think that will happen now? I will be back and I will tell you what is going on. <laughs> If you remember, the coward thieves left the house and the captain was left alone in there. The captain made the signal, but he saw no one's coming. Something was wrong. He came back and he saw that all the barrels on, are empty. He was very angry with them and he knew that this time he should use all of his cunning to make the plan work. He pretended to be a shop owner and he opened the shop just across Alibaba's shop. He was there selling goods and everybody trusted him. They didn't know about his plans. He was a good liar, you see. So one night, Alibaba went into his shop and said, Hey, neighbor, I want you to come to my house for dinner tonight. And if you have family, you can bring them too. He was so generous of him, don't you think? He accepted the invitation and he took a big bag of goods and he went to his home. He was so kind, but he had a dagger hidden in his cloak. He went in there and he had the dinner. Suddenly, Mary saw the dagger. She knew that something bad is going on. So she decided to arrest him. She took a lot of his cars and stepped right behind him. Before he knew anything, she pulled the scarf around him and pulled it so tight that he couldn't move. Alibaba was very surprised and shouted, What are you doing? He's our guest. You shouldn't do something like that. She said, No, that's not so. He's an enemy. Look at his dagger. Alibaba's son looked at the dagger and grabbed it. Alibaba was so surprised to see that and sent the captain and his thieves to the prison right away. Alibaba was so thankful of Mary. So he asked Mary to marry his son. And Mary did so. And they lived happily ever after. Now, did you like our story today? Don't go anywhere. I'll be back with the morals of the story. <laughs> Before saying goodbye, I want to tell you about the moral of the story. This story was about Mary, who was very clever and very loyal to Alibaba and his family. But she was not a member of his family. So why do you think that she did that? Because Alibaba and his family were so kind to her. It's very important for us to be loyal to our family, to our friends, and most importantly, to God. Now, did you enjoy today's story? I hope so. I will see you next time tomorrow. And bye-bye. <laughs>